we want to welcome everyone who is here this evening and we also want to welcome those who is watching this broadcast hallelujah well thank you for being with us this evening and we pray that this service tonight will be a blessing to each of us in jesus name so we're going to open up in prayer in jesus name amen hallelujah heavenly father we thank you so much we thank you hallelujah we thank you for who you are we thank you Lord god for everything that you have done and continue to do in each of our lives lord we call up in your name and we thank you Lord god that you're present you are anointing here in this place right now in the name of jesus lord we thank you Lord god we thank you Lord god for your hedge and your protection for every person who is the part of this ministry those who is watching this broadcast we thank you lord god that your protection surround your people lord god i proclaim and declare in the name of jesus that no weapon against god's people right now should be ever prosper father we thank you that your people will walk in a victory through the lord jesus christ that none of your people be deceived or defeated Father, I speak blessings, blessings over your people. I thank you, Lord God, that you continue to guide and direct your people in a way in a path of righteousness, in a way in a path of holiness, in a way in a path, Father, that you already set in motion for them to walk on in. And Father, we thank you for it. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for this service tonight. We lift them to you, Lord God, thou man of God, Pastor Larry. We thank you, Lord God. Use him tonight as your mighty vessel and instrument, Lord God. Speak for him, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Speak for him, Lord God. And we ask in you, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in this place tonight, Lord God. Touch your people, everyone who is here and those who is watching this broadcast, touch your people. And Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. You are our God. And we know, Lord God, that there's nothing is impossible with you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, have your way, Holy Spirit, in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, let the Lord will lead. This is a service. Let the Lord will lead this service. We also always, always welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, welcome, welcome. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this place. In our daily life, we must also continually to be led by his spirit by the holy spirit to have that relationship with the holy spirit because scripture is teaching us he is our helper the holy spirit is helping us he is comfort us he is teaching us hallelujah and all of the gifts and the uh, manifestations it's uh, also the work of the holy spirit amen so just expect expect to let the spirit of the living god let the work of the holy spirit continue to manifest in your lives because god who we serve he is not just a god but he is the supernatural god and so expect the work of the Holy Spirit. Expect the supernatural things in your life, supernatural miracles, signs, wonders. Expect them. Expect them. Invite them in your life. Invite them in your life. When you face some obstacles in your life, when you face some symptoms in your body, Know that God who you serve, He is the supernatural God. He can heal you. He can restore you. He can open the doors that no man can close. Expect. 
expand. God, move in your life. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's never changed. We may be changed. Time that we live may be changed. But God is never changed. He is the miracle God. He is the supernatural God. Your expectations, your hunger. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that we want more and more of you. Feel us, Lord. Feel us, Lord. Feel us with your spirit, Lord God. Lord, let the feeling of the, your spirit. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that we are so filled with your spirit, Lord God, that we are not allow the desires of the flesh to overcome us. Let the Holy Spirit fill us up, fill us up, fill us up, Holy Spirit. Fill us up, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you speak to your people, even now, right now, in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, my sheep know my voice. Lord, we are your sheep. We are your sheep. We are call up in your name. Lord, we love you and we worship you and we call up in your name. And we ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, continue to comfort your people, continue to show the things to come. Prepare. The Father, that you show the things to come, not to, to scare us, but prepare us. And we thank you, Lord God, this is the time and this is the season, says the Lord, the time of the preparation. Continue to follow me, says the Lord. O Romana Yesoto Yeshetererevana Yesodo Romana Yesoto Yoshederevana Yesem. O seto romana yeso ko romana yese to yoshe dereremana yesu. And I take authority in the name of Jesus and I break every spirit of confusion right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of uncertainty, every confusion, I break it right now over God's people right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, the clarity of the mind. I thank you, Lord God, that your people know the truth. I release the spirit of truth. I release the spirit of truth. And I thank you, Lord, the truth of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you for it, Father, that your people are stepping in, Lord. They will be led by your spirit, and you continue, Lord God, to prepare them, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your many, 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 Father, will step in into that season of the preparation, and that you will equip them, and you will train them, because the Holy Spirit is the also a teacher. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people's hearts has been open, to open to receive to open to receive, to open to be trained by you. And Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for the impartation even now of your spirit to be a teachable, to be a teachable. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, to be a teachable vessels in your hands. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you have raised up the army of the Lord Jesus Christ, fearless, boldly, continue to go forward and do what you call them to do in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of boldness, the spirit of boldness, holy boldness, holy boldness rest up in God's people in Jesus' name. That your people will not be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They will walk by faith and they're led by the spirit of the living God. They will not look at their faces, but they will speak.
speak the truth in love. And Father, we thank you that you will use your people to speak the truth in love. And Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in each of our lives. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that the supernatural opportunities come into your way. Just said, I received that. I received that. Supernatural connections, the connections, the heavenly connections come into your way. Say this, I received that. And every person that been assigned to you by the enemy, every hindrance, every demonic oppression, every weight that is not by God sent, we break it right now in Jesus' name. Father, you said in your words, submit to God and resist the devil. That weight is not coming from God. We resist it and we command you flee in Jesus' name. According to God's word, submit to God and resist the devil. And he has to flee. We thank you, Father, that every person, every extra weight, unwanted, unneeded, demonic weight from the pits of hell, is no longer will occupy your life, your mind, your surrounding, that try to pull your anointing, that strength try to pull you. We break it, the demonic forces of evil. We break it right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we call on you that connections, divine connections, heavenly connections. We thank you, Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you use each of us, those who is here and those who is watching this broadcast, to be in the right place and the right time with the right connection for whom to minister to and whom, whom to speak, to be your mouthpiece, to speak the truth. And Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Lead your people that will go Guide us and direct us in the name of Jesus and all the truth and nothing but the truth. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Have your way in each of our lives. And every person who is here and those who is watching this broadcast, we thank you, Lord God. Supernatural protection, angelic visitation, angelic visitations heavenly angelic visitations and we thank you lord we thank you lord we need you lord we need that touch from heavenly touch lord god and each of our lives lord shaking lord shaking lord everything what is none of you has to go in jesus name we thank you lord that we be a holy vessel for your holy use in this earth in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you save us, that you choose us, that you love us, that you correct us, Lord, that you lead us, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Both Pastor Larry is here. He's going to minister to us tonight. So just get ready to receive the word of God in Jesus' name. second here. 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us this evening to share your word. We pray, Father, that everyone under the sound of our voice will be moved upon by you, Lord, by the power of your spirit. Father, I thank you for ministering to each of our hearts, bringing us to a place in you that our heart will be content. And Father, I release the anointing right now in this place. And I ask you, Father, that you would move by the power of your Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We welcome you into this place right now. We invite you in. And Father, we declare that this is your night. And this is a day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, Father, I ask you that you anoint every ear to hear, prepare your heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we come with you now to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' glorious and mighty majestic name. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Welcome to New Life of Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful day to be amongst the land of the living, in the land of the living. Glory to God. I'm going to sing you a song. We're going to go ahead and get in our message for tonight. Amen. And, uh, and I pray that uh, now, this is not a, a song that we have copyrighted. Amen. It, uh, it's a song that I bought, and I'm not trying to, it's not to, to earn no capital on it, it's just to sing. Okay? So thank you all for understanding that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now and then, an old friend of mine that I've not seen for some time would stop by and ask me where have I been? What's on my mind? And I wonder why I'm not drinking and still painting this old town red. But I tell him that I'm serving Jesus now. The old man is dead. They look like the same Well I may wear those same clothes And I have that same old name yet But you are looking on the outside If you could see inside instead You would see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead Thank you, Father Oh, we worship you We worship you Thank you for your presence I used to live such a wicked life I had no hope inside And I was lost in the darkness, yeah I was searching for the light But 
Then one night in a little church, after hearing what the preacher said, I gave my heart to Jesus. Now the old man is dead. Look like the same. Well, I may wear those same clothes and have that same old name, yeah. But you are looking on the outside. If you could see. You would see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead Yes, you are looking on the outside If you could see inside instead You would see a brand new man and therefore in men in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away before all things become new. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. Okay. I was going to teach on something tonight. But I'm not going to go that route tonight. I'm going to take you to the area that I believe that God placed in my heart for tonight. And that's dealing with your health. Amen. Dealing with your health. Glory to God. Because I know that many people are having health issues. Glory to God. And I'm just going to follow my heart today. You're going to follow my heart. And I pray that God will speak to your heart in the process of me doing so. Amen. And just yield to the Spirit of God. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. God is able to lift you up in the midst of whatever you are facing, whatever you're going through. God is able to, to lift you up. God is able to bring you to a place where you can walk in the Spirit. Amen. Where you can walk in the spirit. So we're talking about we're talking about faith tonight. The word of God come alive through faith. So let's just let's just use this right here as our topic and just walk in the supernatural. <laughs> walk in the supernatural. You want to go for a walk me in the supernatural? Amen. Let's go for a walk in the supernatural tonight. Walking in the walking in the spirit of God. Walking in faith. Amen. I want you to turn. I want you to turn. I want to turn your attention to the book of Matthew chapter. 14. Matthew chapter 14. Amen. Matthew chapter 14. Glory to God. Now, we're just going to go with this. We're going to let the Spirit of God lead the way. Amen. Matthew chapter 14. Glory to His name. Let me get my reading specs on. Glory to God. Verse number 22. Verse number 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go to the and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. Glory to God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. He was there alone. Verse number, verse number uh, uh, 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, 
tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And I call it walking in the supernatural. <laughs> walking in the supernatural. You know, when, when your heart is right with God, when, when things begin to line up and God begin to be glorified in, in your way, in your words, and in your action, and in your deeds, all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself walking in the spirit like you never have before. Amen? Because now you, are, you have made a way for God to have an interest in your life. How was that? By yielding to the spirit of the living God. Amen? Not looking at the circumstances, not looking at the situation, but yielding to the spirit of the living God. Amen? And I remember when, when I, I, I first started yielding to the spirit of God, I, I, I didn't know what, what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. It was just that uh, I was I was I was uh, just just ministering to people, and then they act, and I started and I started praying for people. I started laying hands on people, started praying for people, and I started seeing miracle after miracle after miracle. Amen. And all of a sudden, I said, "Hmm, I like this. <laughs> what what am I doing? I'm, I'm I'm tapping into the area of the ministry that God has called me to. Amen. How was I doing it? I was doing it in trial and in error." But at the same time, in, by, by, in error, I learned to walk in the spirit. I learned to walk by faith and not by sight. And this is what God is wanting you to understand. Because, see, you, you've been given an opportunity to, to sit here under this ministry. And this ministry is it's not, you know, you might, you might say, well, pastor, you just like any other preacher, right? No, I'm not either. I'm not like any other preacher. Hey, Amen. I, I don't have their qualities. They don't have my qualities. We serve the same God. We all, see, when God made me, the mold was broken. It, it, there's no one else just like me. <laughs> just like, it's, like with the other guy. There's no one just like them. Amen. We all have our own DNA. Amen. We serve the same God. We have the same Father. We, we the same Holy Ghost. But we all, have our, we all have our own function that God has given each and every one of us. Amen. And so my, my thing is that I want to, I want to not only uh, just to walk in the spirit by myself, I want to be able to, to impart to you the ability to walk in the spirit. Amen? Because when you learn how to walk in the spirit, you will also learn that, that God is with you, that his word and his spirit will comfort you, that you don't have to be afraid of nothing that the devil try to throw at you. Amen? Because Jesus... He saw how the disciples were so afraid. They was in this boat, and the wind was contrary to them, according to the word of God. The wind was contrary. It was boisterous and, and contrary toward them. Amen. So Jesus came to them how? Walking on the water, or walking on the sea. And I call it walking in the supernatural. Amen. Or walking in the spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it says right here, verse number, verse number 26 now. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, is it a spirit? <laughs> and they cried out for fear. You see how easy it was for fear to grip their heart? And, because they saw something out of the ordinary. Fear gripped their heart. They was not expecting something like that. And, 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 and notice what else it goes on to say here. Amen. Notice what else it goes on to say. Amen. And uh, verse number twenty-five, and 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 in the fourth watch of the night, and in the fourth watch of the night, I'm gonna start back right here again. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, "Is it a spirit?" And they cried out for fear. Verse number twenty-seven. And straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. It is I. Then he said, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Amen. Be not afraid. And Peter answered and said unto him, and Peter answered and said, Lord, oh my God. See, I like Peter. Peter is an adventurous guy. He's a, he, he will, he will, he will, if he sees something, if he sees somebody else doing something, he got the same attitude of me. If, if he can do it, then 
I want to do it too. <laughs> That's the way I am. I see Jesus ministering to people, and he said, the works that I do shall you do also. Amen. And that's why uh, John 14, 12 is one of my favorite scriptures. Because he said, the works that I do shall you do also. Amen. And just like Peter, I want to do the work. I want to do what he said that I, that, that, that I can do. Amen. If he said it, he, he, he don't lie, so it must be true. So I want to do it. Amen. That was my attitude growing up as a as a a, 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 a newborn Christian. When I started reading the Bible for myself, it was my it was, it was when I saw Jesus did something, I wanted to do it too. Amen. And when it started raining, I went and walked on the water <laughs> in the driveway. But uh, you know, I I, I I still walked on water. Hey, let me let me stop. That's just just joke. Just some joke, man. <laughs> but the thing about it, folks, the thing about it is this: God wants you to put fear away. He said, fear not. Ain't that what he told them? Amen. Be of, be of good cheer and fear not. Don't be afraid. Amen. Verse number 27. It is I. Be not afraid. Verse number 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Bid me to come to thee on the water. Amen. And Jesus said, and he said to him, this is Jesus talking because it was, Peter was talking to him. And look at how the response. And he said to him, and he said, come. And when Peter saw, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. See, Peter started walking in the spirit. He started walking in the supernatural. He didn't even realize what he was doing. And, and, and he walked out in confidence. See, this is what happened. When people start to walk with God, they start in confidence. They believe that God is going to be with them. They believe that God is with them. They believe that, that, there's, no, that there's no failure in God. But soon they get out there when they see trouble, when they see situations, when they see the, when they when they hear people starting to tell them how to do what God called them to do, when God has never said what what, they, what the people are saying, they begin to become discomfort. They begin to allow fear to grip their heart. They began to pay more attention to the voice of man rather than to the voice of God. And it caused them to stop walking in the spirit. It caused them to stop walking in the supernatural. And it stopped the signs, wonders, and miracles from happening because they began to listen to the voice of man rather than the voice of the spirit of a living God. Amen. You can't walk in the supernatural and 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 and, 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 and please man. You got to be if you're going to be a man pleaser, you might as well forget it. You might as well forget it. But if you're going to be a God pleaser, oh my God. Don't let fear. Don't let fear have no place in your heart. Amen. Know who you are and know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Know that God is going to confirm his word with signs following. Amen. I like this because Peter, uh, uh, he got out of that boat. He got out of that boat. Notice what he said right here, verse number 29. And he said, come. And, and when, when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus, to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, when he heard the voices of the people, or when, he, when he heard the voices of those that are in positions of authority, <laughs> when he heard the voices of the of the of the <laughs> oh God, I could I, I hear something in my spirit, and I and I'm, and I'm trying to I'm trying to bring it out so that so that you can understand what God is saying because you see. When, when God has called us to walk in the spirit, when God has called us to walk in the supernatural, so often, so often we begin to want someone else's opinion. And God never told you to ask no one for opinion. Amen. He given us his He given us his word. Amen. And his word is for correction, his word for reproof, his word for rebuke. And, and, for, and God's word, it's all you need, and all you gotta do is just, just honor. What God has said, and, and, and all you're going to, what you're going to find out, that God will never ask you to do something that you cannot do. He will never ask you to do something that you cannot do. Amen. Now, it may ask you to do something you never did. I've seen that a lot. 
He might have asked me, he, he, he asked me to do a lot of things that I've never did. And you know what? I said, well, Lord, is that what you want me to do? No problem, I'll do it. I remember the first time God told me to go to India. I had never thought about going to India, had never had a dream of going to India. Amen. And when I thought telling people that I'm from, God told me to go to India, they thought saying, you, they thought calling me names. They thought saying, I'm crazy, I'm foolish. Why would you want to go to India? You, do, you, do you know anyone over there? No. You know, I don't know anyone over there. But at that point, I didn't. Amen. So they said, well, why do you want to go? I said, because God said go. Well, what you going to, how do you going to do when you get there? I don't know. I guess I'm going to preach. Because that's what I am. I'm a preacher. Amen. And how did that come about? I heard God say go. And what I started doing when God spoke to me, I started walking on the water. What I mean by walking on the water, I started making preparations. I went to the doctor and got all my immunity shots and everything. And I said, God, it's going to take money because I got my, 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 my home here and I got my bills got to be paid. And I, I said, and, and, and you want me to go over there? You want me to stay? You want me to stay two to three weeks at a time, a month at a time? I said, Lord, how am I going to do that and pay my bills? And all of a sudden, someone called me and said, God put you on my heart. And he told me to give you, uh, I have a, I have my, I've been putting up my, I've been saving my tithes and my offerings. I've been putting them in a savings account. And I'm going to, God told me to give you my tithes. And I said, okay. And I didn't ask how many, how much it was or nothing. But the, but the, but the, the woman sent me the tithes in the form of a cashier's check. And I said, whoa. <laughs> I said, whoa. I said, God must be being busy. He really wants me to go. Amen. So he, I got the cashier check, and I, and, and, I, and, and I knew then it was all on. And so I went and bought my ticket, I went, and I, I bought my ticket and everything, got everything settled, and I paid all my bills up. Amen. And my rent and everything, paid it all up before I left, so I don't have no back payment when I get back home. I got everything taken care of. Amen. And, and I went on, on my trip. I went on my trip. I had money to spare when I was over there, money to spend when I was over there, because when I got there, I had to do a lot of work. I had to do a lot of work because I was, when I arrived there, no one could speak English, no one at all. I couldn't hear no one talking English, speaking English. And I went up to my, I went to a hotel, got me a room. I went up and stayed in the, in the room all night, and I prayed and fasted all day, all that day and all that night. And I come back down, and I come back down, I said, Lord, I need someone that's going to speak English. I came back down the next day, and there was a group of people standing in the corner, and they were all speaking English. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord. And come to find out that this was a trap. This, this, was, a, this was a traveling agency, people. Amen. There was a traveling agency, uh, a tourist people. Amen. So there were tourists, not traveling, but tourists. Amen. And, uh, and, and, I, and I connected with those tourist people, and we became good friends. And they started carrying me everywhere I wanted to go, and I and they and I and I asked them, "Is that is there church in town anywhere?" Tourist guys. Tourist guys, yeah. And I said, "Is there a church in town anywhere?" And uh, they said, "Yeah." I said, "Is is it a Christian church?" They said, "Yeah." And I said, "I would like to go. I want to go to that church on Sunday. Will you come take me to the church on Sunday?" And it was right before Passover. It was right at the week of Passover. Amen. Passover was before we started that particular. Next, that particular Sunday, uh, the week following, that that was this Sunday. Then Passover started that Monday, that Passover week. And I walked into the church, and the, and and I didn't even know the one. They didn't know me, but the pastor he saw me walking in church. He saw that I was American, and he recognized me. And he said, uh, "Sir, are you a preacher?" I said, "Yeah." He said. And, and and he went on and ministered that day. He said, and then he came. We had a little conversation. He said, "What are you gonna do your, the, for next? What you got planned for next week?" I said, "I don't have anything planned. I'm just here because I don't know what I'm. I just I'm just here because God told me to come." And he said, "Oh, really? Okay. Uh, if you're not if you're not busy next week, I want you to do my uh, my my Holy Week service the whole week." And I said, "Whoa, yes." <laughs> I said, yes, amen, walking on the water, amen, not knowing what to do, just walking in obedience to what God has given me, amen. Then after, after I ministered 
to them people that whole week. I will, I will minister this uh, along the same line I've been ministering all for this year uh, uh, on salvation and rededication and baptism in the Holy Spirit. Many people came to the Lord. Many people got saved. Many people was healed. Amen. Then there was a, a college professor sitting in the audience. Amen. And, and, and on that, on that uh, last few nights I was there, the last few days I was there, and he said, uh, uh, he said, he said, hey, 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 hey uh, uh, preacher, oh, what are you doing next week? And I said, well, uh, I don't know, because I'll be done here uh, Sunday. I'll be my last day preaching here. He said, what are you doing after this? I said, I, I don't have anything to do. He said, how about coming and preach at my college? I said, Whoa. <laughs> see that see when you're obeying God, you don't know what you're gonna you don't know everything that you're gonna be doing, but you're gonna walk in the spirit of the living God, walking in the supernatural. Amen. Peter was walking in the supernatural, but all of a sudden Peter got his eyes off of God. He got his eyes off of God. And when he took his eyes off of God, he began to focus at what? He began to focus at the surroundings. He began to focus at the wind and the waves. Amen. And I call it familiar voices. Familiar voices. You ever heard the, the sound of familiar voices before? Or you might look at and see familiar spirits <laughs> operating through people. Then all of a sudden, your faith, because when they when those familiar voices or familiar spirits go to coming after you, what are they doing? They are aiming at your spirit to calm you down. Because you 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 you're walking too strong in the spirit. They don't want too much light around them, so they want to. Try to put your little fire out so that you can be like them. Amen. God never called you to be like anyone but him. And God was a God walked in the spirit. God walked according to the word of God. And it's time for you to understand that God has called you out of your comfort zone also. Folks, we're in the last days. We're in the last days. We have to see ourselves walking as God has called us to walk. By the Spirit. Amen. By the Spirit. Notice what he says right here in verse number 31. Verse number 30. Verse number 30. Verse number 30, I mean. Verse number 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. See, that same fear that they saw over in verse number 27, he see it again. Now, it's, it, 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 it hit him now. He was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And notice what Jesus, he never... Jesus never became, he never was afraid. He never allowed fear to interfere with his purpose. Amen. In verse number 31, he, immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, saying, and said unto him, O ye, O thou of little faith, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, notice what he said, the wind ceased. The wind ceased. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So now we see that God, when, when, you, when you're walking, you don't take your eyes off of your purpose. You don't take the eyes off of your goal. When God called you, he didn't call you and then tell you to stop and start looking at what people are saying. Start looking at what they're telling you to do over here and what they tell you. God called you to walk. He gave you a purpose. He gave you a, a goal. He gave, he gave you the wisdom. He, and, he, and, and a lot of people, he is due with supernatural power to carry out his assignment. Amen. That's right. But look how many have allowed themselves to, be, to, to stop in their tracks. Amen. And allow fear to, to come against them. And so now God is saying, Have my assignment changed since I've spoken to you? Did I change my mind? And God said, no, I did not change my mind. My assignment for you have not changed. So why are you allowing yourself to be deterred or to be, or be confounded by the face of man? Did I not call you by the spirit? Why are you listening to the flesh? Amen. See, God is looking at God is looking at the heart of His of His people. Amen. He called us out. He gave us a purpose. He gave us an assignment, and now He's telling us, "Get your eyes off of man." Oh, Shatala Bakai. He said, "Get your eyes off of man," because I'm telling you, 
we are in a place right now that we can't we can't uh, look at the face of man because if we do, we're going to sink like Peter. We're going to sink like Peter. We're going to lose out on God's greatest promises for us. And right now, the promises of God are about to be made manifest among us. And God spoke to my heart the other day, and God said, I'm separating some people from you. And now, look what's here tonight. Amen. It's just the truth. Here's the truth. God spoke my heart. He told me that. Amen. And so I'm not, I'm not moved by that. You know why? Because I know that God's going to add something. Because the word is so much alive today. The word is so much alive today. Amen. And so now we see in Matthew, we, uh, you, 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 have, uh, you, you, you have to be willing to take a step of faith. And to get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your boat. Get out of your, your place of comfort. What is, the, what is the boat in your life? What is, the, what is that in your life that is holding you, that's holding you up? Amen. See, that boat was holding them up in the midst of that, in the midst of that water. What is holding you up? Are you standing on a, have you established a foundation of God's word beneath you? Amen. If so, then you have, a, a, you have, a, you have a, something more than just a boat to hold you up. You have the word of God to hold you, to sustain you. Amen. To keep you in the midst of your circumstances. Glory to God. Amen. So when the when the when the life when the life begin to when things begin to mess up around you, amen, you gotta understand your car, your job, your home, your friends, they're not gonna be able to help you. You gotta put your trust, the Bible said in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You gotta learn, you gotta learn to put your trust in the one who called you. Yes, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And the Bible said, in all your ways, in all your ways, he said, to acknowledge him. Not to acknowledge Johnny, not to acknowledge Joe Blow, not to acknowledge Susan. He said, acknowledge him. Yes. Because you see, as long as you as long as you keep him front and center, you're not gonna you're not gonna yield to the left. You're not gonna yield to the right. You're gonna walk in the path that he's called you to walk, and in that pathway is life, and there's no death. In the path that God called you to walk, there's life, there's no death. Amen. And you can rest assured that the God of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob, that he's with you, that he will never leave you nor forsake you, that he will comfort you, that he has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. You don't have to be afraid. All you got to do is walk by faith. And don't look at the storms of life. Don't look at what the world is saying. Look only to what the word of God is saying because the word of God is your only way out. Of your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so when I'm looking at this thing, when I'm looking at this thing, I can see, I can see that God is speaking to us. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 18. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 18. Let's turn there right now. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians 3 18. Now notice what the word of God says here. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Are temporal. See, God knew. God knew that that storm that, that, that the disciple was in was temporal. It, he knew it wasn't going to last long. Amen? But they didn't understand. All they Saul was wind bolsters and the waves beating up against them and fear gripped their hearts. And Jesus came to them, what? Walking on the sea. And they cried out for fear. They cried out for fear. Fear is a tool that the enemy uses to, to, to steal your hope, to steal your future, to steal the promise of God right out of your heart. To stop you from advancing in your, in your walk with God. Folks, we are in a place right now that we have to hold the word of God so dear to our hearts 
And if, if you don't know the Word of God, when the trial and tribulation come, you don't have no Bible until you can go into the pages and start reading. And it's not you can't blame God because God has told you already to study to show thyself approved, a workman of God, needs not to be ashamed, right to divide the word of truth. But if you don't know the truth, then how can the truth make you free? You're going to remain, you're going to go into bondage. Why? Because you don't know the truth. And so that's why we have to understand. We need to start to read the word. We need to start to meditate on the word. We need to start memorizing the word. Because there's going to come a time and in days to come, you won't have a... You See, right now in different countries, they've outlawed the Bible already. Now just think how they how, how they're working on how, how the how they're working on trying to stop the church from operating here in America right now. If they stop it, folks, you're gonna to have to have something to stand up on. Because if they see you with a Bible, they're gonna lock you up, they're gonna kill you, whatever. Amen. It's coming. Y'all think it's getting better? It's not getting better. It's getting it's gonna get worse. It's gonna get worse. Folks, we're in the last days, and God has given us the ability to prepare ourselves before that time really hit us hard. So we must we must begin to memorize the word of God. We must begin to, you know, because that, that, you won't be able to carry your Bible like you're doing today. You're going to have to have it memorized. So when trouble, when trials, when tribulation begin to come against you, you're going to have to be able to go into your heart and into your spirit. And you've got to begin to allow the words that you have uh, learned to surface again. And you got to start quoting those words right out of your spirit. God, you have said in your word that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God, you have given me the power over all the powers of the enemy. Therefore, Father, I will not fear what man shall do for me, to do to me. A thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Father, I stand on your word. Amen. You see, you got to have the word coming out of your spirit because, you see, you're coming into a time when God is going to expect you to walk by faith and not by sight, to walk in the spirit. It's time to prepare to walk in the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. And so he said right in verse number 18, once again, he said, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, because you see, those situations that's coming up and rising up in your life, they're not going to last forever. Those circumstances, those situations that are rising up in your life, they're only going to be there just for a little while to cause you to doubt God. And once, they, once, they, once they have accomplished their goal, all of a sudden, everything's back to normal, except your heart. Your heart been contaminated because of fear. He has crippled you because of fear. Now you can't do what God called you to do because now you're afraid. Peter, what are you doing? Get back in this boat, boy. What do you think you're doing? No, nope. Jesus is walking on the water and he said, I can come. I'm coming. I'm going to the, I'm walking on the water. You got to see yourself getting out of your boat, getting out of your situation. You got to see yourself walking in the spirit of truth. God said, come. It must be true. I'm coming. He's not going to ask you to do something you can't do. He might tell you to do something you never did, but he's never going to ask you to do something you can't do. If he asks you to do it, believe me, you can do it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. So now, so now let's look at let's look at this because you see, we need to understand, see, when we when we look into the when we look into the mirror, when we look into the mirror, we should see an image of God because we are in this world, but we are not of this world. God created us in his image and after his likeness. Amen. So when we look into a mirror, into a mirror, we 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 gonna see we gonna see an image, and I said, oh, don't I look good? Today? Oh yeah, yeah, hon, you sure do. Yeah, but look, don't look at your flesh. Look, take a deep look in that mirror, and look beyond the natural. Begin to see the spirit of the living God. 
I was looking in the mirror this morning when I was combing my hair. After I got out of the shower and everything, grew myself up, shaved and everything. I was looking in the mirror and I said, look at that handsome guy. <laughs> I said, don't he look good? <laughs> amen, amen. I'm talking, I'm talking to myself, amen. And and I and I and I can see, and I can see that, that there's a little gray right here on my side right here. And it's just like the glory of God was just covering me. Because I could see myself. In the spirit. God wants you to see yourself in the spirit. Amen. You see, when Moses spent time in the presence of the Lord, his face glowed with the glory of God. I looked in the mirror this morning, I saw the glory of God up on me. And I said, don't I look good? Yeah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. God wants you to see yourself that way. Amen. Glory to God. God wants you to see yourself that way, John. Amen. He wants you to see yourself that way. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So when I when I when I when I look at this, I can see that God, God is calling us. He's calling us not just to be children, amen, but to be children of the supernatural. Amen. Amen. Not to be a natural children, but of the supernatural. This is the way God sees us. God sees us as the supernatural children. He sees us as his offspring. He sees us as his children. Amen. You know, when I look at my baby, when I look at my girl, I see, I see a, a, a fraction of me in her. Amen. When God looks at us, he sees a fraction of himself in us. So we need to we need to cultivate that what he sees in us and we need to we need to bring it out into the open where the world will see the same thing that God sees in us. It's time to walk in the spirit of the supernatural. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The same God that raised Jesus will also raise you up. He will also raise you up in the time of trouble. He will, he will cause you to rise up above your storm. He will cause you to walk right in the midst of your storm. He will cause you to see yourself walking on the water. Walking on the water. Stepping out of your boat. Stepping out of your comfort zone. Seeing yourself fulfilling the, the, the plan and the purpose that he has prepared for you to walk in. Not the world. God knows what the world has planned for you is to destroy you. But God said, the plans that I have for you is to not to harm you. The plans that I have for you is to do good, to bless you, to give you hope, to give you a future, to give you an expected end. God want to give you, he want to give you a future. Amen. God want to give you a future. Amen. To walk in the supernatural, you must become a, a worshiper of God. You must begin to worship God, Amen. So, no, so notice, notice what he uh, what, what what he said in the, in John chapter, in John chapter four, John chapter four, Amen. John chapter four. If you're going to be a worshiper of God, you got to learn to worship God. You got to learn to worship God, Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter four. He said, "Our Father worship in this mountain, and ye and ye and ye say." That in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We worship what we. Glory. Verse number 22. Ye worship ye know not what. We we know what we worship, for salvation is what? Is of the Jews. Amen. And notice what it says, verse number 23. This is John chapter 4, verse number 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father. Notice what it said now. In spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God, verse number 24, so important. God is what? Spirit. A spirit. Not God is spirit. God is a spirit. That means he separated himself from all other spirits. God is a spirit. And they that worship him 
must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So, in, so we, if we're gonna if we're gonna walk in the supernatural, we gotta start off by being a true worshiper of Him. Start by worshiping. Start by acknowledging Him. Start by exalting His name above all the names of the earth. Amen. Let His name rise up like never before in your heart, declaring His goodness and His mercy to everyone around you. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. To walk in the supernatural, we must worship God. We must worship God. Whoa! Now, 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 now do you do you do you notice? Do you notice when you when you start worshiping God? When you start worshiping God, you notice how you notice how. Oh my God! You just sit there mind your own business, and and and, and you hear some good preaching going on. And you you feel good about the preaching, then all of a sudden in your heart you begin to God I worship you, God I love you, God I thank you. Then all of a sudden it begin to, you begin to open your mouth, you begin to say those words, you begin to say those words, Amen. And now that you begin to put voice to those words that you were hearing in your spirit, now that you begin to put voice to those words, your whole atmosphere right around you begin to change. Why? Because you step out of the natural into the supernatural. You step into the spirit realm. Why? How did you do that? By worshiping him. You cause your, your atmosphere, your atmosphere to be transformed by your worship, by the words of your mouth. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And when you begin to worship God, when you begin to acknowledge God, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're in the spirit. You're in the spirit. Glory to God. And once you're in the spirit, you're ready to, to step into that zone where signs, wonders, and miracles happen. How are they going to, how they going to happen? Because you, you, you come out, you step out of your comfort zone. You step out of your comfort zone. When God told me to go to India, I didn't know no one in India. I said, okay, God, if you want me to go, I'll go. Next thing you know, everything I needed to go to make that journey, God started to cause it to come about. What happened? I, I said yes to God, and God said, thank you. I will provide for you. <laughs> and God began to provide. Amen. God began to, because, because he, he's looking for a willing vessel. Even today, God is looking for willing vessels to take a stand in the midst of the storms that are surrounding us. The whole world right now is in a big storm. A big tidal wave is covering the earth. Tidal wave of darkness. And God is looking for someone that will stand up and be a light in this dark world. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, Y'all understand what I'm talking about tonight? Glory to God. I'm telling you, God is looking for someone that will stand up and be a, 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 a strong. Amen. We walk in the supernatural. We must become worshipers. Amen. Now we have no now, now that we become worship worshipers, we're ready to experience the goodness of the Lord like never before. Amen. You got to see yourself in him. See yourself in him. Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14, since we're still in John. John chapter 15, I mean. John chapter 15. Since we're still right here in the book of John. Amen. John chapter 15. Or we can go to 14 too, but let's go to 15. Because my time is almost up. My time is about up. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 15. And then we'll go to 14. One, we'll do one scripture in both chapters. Amen. But right here in John chapter 14, John chapter 15, he said, in verse number 7. John chapter 15, verse number 7. You see, God wants you to, to, to understand that. It's time for you to begin to prepare for your breakthrough. He wants you to prepare your heart for your breakthrough. How many of you know that, that God wants to bring you into a, a higher realm than you've been walking in? See, this year, we, we over halfway now. We're over halfway in this year. And God has given us messages this year to bring you to a position where you can begin to experience more of God than you've ever experienced in your life. Amen. This year is not done yet because, see, on we're gonna start. We started. We started to talk about the, the the Holy Ghost on Sunday mornings now. So I'm telling you, you don't want to miss these Sunday mornings right now. You don't want to miss them 
Because it, it's about to become more intense. Because preparing you for your visitation, we took you through uh, the time where people was going through Moses and Abraham and Adam and Eve and all them stuff. We took you through all them. Then we brought you to the time now. We're to the time now where God is saying it's time for the, for the people to return back to him with their whole heart. Amen. Rededicate their life. Come back to him with their whole heart. Rededicating their life. Amen. And repenting of their sin. Amen. And now we've been talking about salvation. Now we're going to start talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Starting Sunday. Y'all don't want to miss this. Oh, it's about we 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 about we about to we about to begin to walk in the power. Whoa, glory to God. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be powerful. It's gonna be powerful. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be powerful. And this is what God prepared us for right now. Because see, we're in the last days, folks. And the devil is walking about as a rowing lion, seeking whom he may devour. Someone that who, who, who resists steadfastness in the faith. Someone who forgot who they are in, the, in, the, in, 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 in Christ. Amen. And the devil is walking around. He's lurking around. And he's trying to find someone that has opened up their heart to doubt, to fear, to unbelief. And he's going to come at them to devour them. You remember the Bible said in John 10, 10, the thief comes up before to steal to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. That animal, that devil is as a ruined lion. He didn't say that he was a ruined lion. He said he's as a ruined lion. He may, have, he may have a growl, but he don't have no bite because he's as a ruined lion. He can only affect you if you yield to him. Amen. He can only affect you if you yield to him. God has given us the power over all the powers of the enemy. Glory to God. Now what I tell you, John chapter, John chapter uh, uh, 15, verse number 7, he said, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. You see, you got to learn, this, this is when you're walking in the Spirit. When you're walking in the Spirit, when you, when you, stay, when you stand close to God, you can ask God, you can ask God, and God is not going to deny you. God is going to give you what you need to carry out the assignment. You don't have to be afraid. Amen. You're going to, you, you, he's going to give you what you need to carry out the assignment. Now let's back it up to four, chapter 14 and verse number 10. Chapter 14, verse number 10. Amen. John chapter 14, verse number 10. And it reads, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? See, you got to see yourself in him and him in you. When I looked into the mirror, I saw God's glory. I saw God's presence on, my, on, on, my, on me. And I said, oh, God, thank you so much. And I began to worship, worship him. And I began to thank him. And I began to love on him. Amen. Why? Because I saw him. I, saw, I, I looked beyond the natural when I looked at myself in the mirror. And I saw the supernatural. I saw the supernatural. Amen. God wants you to understand that he's with you, that he never leaves you. Look at John chapter 14, verse number 10. John chapter 14, verse 10 says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Notice what it says right here. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. He doeth the works. Verse number 11 says, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Amen. Verse number 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Amen. He that believeth on me. See, first you got to believe that he's in you and that you are, and that you are in him. Then verse number 12 is going to become a living reality in your, in your life. That's when you start to walk in the spirit. That's when you start walking in the supernatural. You see, verse number 12 is one of my favorite verses out of the whole Bible because that gave me the ability to carry out the assignment that God has given me. I when, when, the, when the people said that I, that I couldn't, I said, no, that's not what the Word of God said. The Word of God said, uh, the Word of God said, but very, very, I said to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater what he shall do, because I go to my Father. So I said, okay, the Word of God says I can do this, but you said I can't do this. Who do I believe, you or God? You, now, I, I choose to believe God. And believing God caused me to walk out in the supernatural. Call me to minister to the sick. Call me to minister to health and healing to the sick. Amen. God wants you to come to that same place in life. My time is up. And I'm just halfway through with this message. Whoa, glory to God. 
<laughs> amen, amen, amen. Y'all get anything out of this tonight? Amen. I tell you, as more, I got more. I got more because God is a God of much, much more. Oh, when we trust God, when we look to God. When we don't allow fear to grip our heart, when we keep our focus on the one who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, he will equip you, he will endow you, he will supernatural, uh, he will supernatural uh, infuse you with his power. And, and, and nobody around you is going to understand it. They're not going to understand it. They say, how are you doing all this and nobody else is able to do it? Because we choose to walk by faith and not by sight. We choose not to hear the wind blowing, the waves beating, circumstances all around us trying to grab our attention. We choose not to look at those things. We choose to look to the hill for which cometh our help. For all of our help cometh from the Lord, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth and things under the earth. God is a supernatural God. And you are a supernatural people. Father, I thank you for your word today, tonight. I thank you, Lord God, that, that you have made an impact upon our hearts. Help us now, Lord God, to not just hear this word, but you said in the book of James, you said to be doers of the word. And be not forgetful hearers, but be doers of the word. So, Father, help us to apply what you are giving us so that when the time comes, we will know how to stand firm, to stand strong in the midst of the storms of life. Give us not only the information, Father, but the application to apply what we have received and have heard of you. And Father, we'll do it. We'll do it. You'll do what? We'll do the word. We'll do the word. We'll stand on your word and not let it fall to the ground. And Father, we thank you for it now in advance. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you for your the spirit of impartations that have went forth in this place tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Father, that you've ministered to hearts not only here, but around the world tonight, in Africa, in India, in, in America, and in, in wherever else, in, in Pakistan, wherever else they've been listening, Father. I thank you for it. I bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and prepare our offering for tonight. Amen. God said to give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. He said, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Glory to God. The day is what, the ninth? Mm -hmm. All day long, huh? And the eighth month? We over halfway, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hallelujah. Jesus, I'm going to pray over those. If you're with us by the end of it, you want to sow a seed, go to my website, LabbergMinistries.com. Use your ATM card, your credit card, plant that seed, and expect your supernatural breakthrough. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to give today into your kingdom, into your work, Lord God. We bless this offering, Father. We thank you, Father, that your word 
is working in us the hope of glory. We receive this, this, this seed. Father, we release this seed as a, as a point of contact for a financial breakthrough in our lives. And Father, as we give, you said in your word that it shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give them to our bosom. Father, you said ever since the world been, there's always been seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. Father, we've been preparing for this all year, preparing the ground for the seed to be planted into rich soil. And now, Father, as the seed is going into the soil, I pray, Father, in the name of seed, in the name of Jesus, that this seed will begin to germinate and begin to grow. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corner of the ear. Father, I ask you to multiply back into their lives like you said in your word. And God, I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for it in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that the heavens is opening unto your people and pouring them out a blessing that they would not have room enough to receive it. I thank you for it, and I say that it is done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. If you're here today, you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, right now I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask Jesus Christ right now, the Lord of glory, to come and make his abode with us. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, and you want to do so, or maybe you have made him the Lord of your life, but you backslid, you went back into that old lifestyle, and you want, to re, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, you want to come to him once again as though it was for the first time, and God is not going to turn your way. He's going to welcome you. Amen. He's going to welcome you in. Say this with me right now. Whether you're coming for the first time or whether you're coming for the second, third, fourth, fifth, how many times, it doesn't matter. If you're asking Jesus Christ to forgive you your sin and to come to your heart right now, he's ready and able to do that right now. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart, to create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. I believe that you are the Son of God and I believe you died for my sin. Today, as I confess this, I believe, according to your word, that I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you said that simple prayer right now, I believe that you are saved. And I believe though, you're, you're, uh, you're, though you may have many trials, many tribulations, many attacks, God is intervening in your life right now. Yes. And Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Set your people free. Give them the peace that's a passive all understanding so that they will never backslide or turn away from you again. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Well, anybody want prayer tonight? Come on, sir. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to anoint you too. <laughs> Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see my brother, you know his heart. There's nothing about him that you don't understand, Father. You created him in your, in your own image, not your likeness. And now, Father, as I lay my hand upon him right now, and I anoint his head with this oil, Father, I release the power of the Holy Ghost to begin a fresh work within him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, I'm asking, Father, for fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh anointing, in the name of Jesus, let the life and the nature of God rise up within him like never before. And let him begin to see himself walking in the spirit of who you are, Ashatalabakai, and not as the world is. Because you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Now, Father, I release that anointing now from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Divine health and healing in the name of Jesus, it belongs to him. Now, I release it now, receive it. Receive it by faith, in the name of Jesus. Just open up your heart and receive it, there it is. Receive it, 
And if you have any issues in your body right now, you can just boldly declare, I'm healed. And don't let go of that word. Just boldly declare, I'm healed. In the name of Jesus, I receive it now. Thank you for it, Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Amen. God is good, brother. God is good. His mercy endured forever. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for those that are with us by the internet in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, Father, that you would touch, that you would minister to their hearts like never before. Holy Spirit, show yourself strong on their behalf. I release the power of your word to become a living reality in their hearts. And God, I thank you for it in advance. We bless you. We love you. Until the next time, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.